Hi, this is Roger and thanks for dropping by. This is part four in our series of uh, store-bought orchids, or store-bought phalaenopsis in this case. I was actually hoping to get a, an oncidium type in amongst this series, but when I went there they only had phalaenopsis, so that's what we got. Right, pots. I would recommend with any epiphytic orchid that you get it in the smallest pot you can without damaging the roots without breaking them, trying to get them in the pot, if you see what I mean. Because although these roots look pretty fleshy and sturdy, they will snap. If I bent that one, that big fleshy one there, it would snap very, very quickly. They're very, very rigid. These are a bit floppy, yeah? But first of all, let's chat about pots. Um, I'm hoping to get that one in that small pot, and I think it will. This root will stay out, it will be an aerial root, and the rest should tuck in there. Yeah? Now, always try and get an air cone pot if you can, but um, you know, a lot of the types of pots for orchids are from specialist orchid suppliers, but you'll find an assortment on eBay, um, sometimes a bit expensive. Um, but what is most important is lots of those. Lots of holes in the bottom and preferably a concave shape of some sort in there just in case the plant ends up standing in a tray with some water or a decorative pot. That at least gets the bottom of the pot away from the water. But they, these should not stand in water. Yeah. Right, so that's a small one. And then I've got four sort of slightly larger ones. They're all different. Um, that's what they call a genuine air cone. Yeah, it has a cone shape sticking up in the bottom of the pot, followed by lots of drainage holes and feet. Yeah, so again, when that's standing flat on a surface, air can move around here and help dry from the bottom upwards. Without a good airflow at the base of the pot, the top will start to dry while the bottom's still soaking wet. So you've got half your roots that need watering and half that are still wet and it makes life difficult. So the more airflow you can get the better. So that's an air cone. This is a different type. Um, this has got like a, a flat base to the cone but nonetheless look at the amount of air that can get in the bottom of that pot. That is a good pot. Yeah? Lots and lots of drainage and a nice raised section in the middle. Yeah, that's a good pot. And then here we've got yet a different option. This is an incredibly sturdy pot, this one. Um, this has got an even larger, flatter piece at the bottom. But if you look underneath, it hasn't got as much drainage. Yeah, this one's much better. This is still okay. It's got drainage holes, it's got a raised section, but this one hasn't got any feet. When this one sits on a tray, it's flat. Yeah, so not so good as that one with the feet. So that's that one. We've got another one over here. Now this is a wide bottom pot. These are unusual. These don't come up very often. You can see normal flower pot shape. Yeah, it tapers down the sides, whereas this one's quite flat down the sides and it ends up with a much wider bottom for the size of the top of the pot. So the sides are almost straight. No air cone at all this time, but feet and very large drainage holes. Now you can make more drainage holes. There are various ways, and one way you might think is to get something pointed like a pair of scissors and start poking holes. Some of these are made of very rigid plastic and they will crack. So as you make a hole, they will crack right up the length of the pot. Um, a way of doing it with extreme caution is with a soldering iron. When it's hot it will just melt through. You can make as many holes as you like and they're normally quite a good size and they're nice and round. But this is plastic. The fumes given off are toxic. So make sure you do it in a well ventilated place and don't burn yourself. <laughs> right, so this is my first little plant. As I say it's going to go in here. Now I would always plant a phalaenopsis in bark. It doesn't need anything else. Like I said, these are epiphytes. They need a lot of air around their roots. 
Now this is Orchiata bark. Um, once this plant's potted, unless it outgrows its pot, it can stay in that bark for three, maybe four years before that even starts to think about breaking down, which means that plant doesn't need to be disturbed for a very long time. Yeah, I've also got some in there is a mix that was large bark. This is medium bark with some small bark. There's even some bits of moss left over from the last time I used it. I'll show you what I'm going to use that for in a minute. Right, so a little bit of media in the bottom of the pot. That's just to stop the roots touching the bottom of the pot. Because the first thing they'll do is head straight out of the holes. And um, you can end up with roots growing out of the bottom of the pot and they'll start lifting the pot up. <laughs> they, when they're actively growing they are quite vigorous now all I'm going to do is gently lower that plant in to roughly where I want it yeah let's have a look at its position see if we like its position and first thing I need to do is look round what's going to hang out and we've got this little root here so that needs some room that one's sticking out sideways I'm going to have to trim it because otherwise it's going to stop the plant going in the pot which is a nuisance because it's a reasonable root but I want the plant, oh I forgot to actually trim the dead bits off there's only a couple on this plant there's not a lot of dead on here at all that was it <laughs> these are all firm roots and even if the growing tips are lost they may still branch out I'm not taking anything else off the only reason that root came off was to get this low enough in the pot to support itself and if you turn your pot gently as you put your roots in the roots will find a place to be easier than if you just if they stand straight like that and you push hard you'll break them but if you can get them to twist slightly as you go in yeah they will find a place much easier than if you didn't okay now I want the base of the plant quite close to the top of the pot. And now all we do is feed some more media into the gaps. Now I've got a huge gap in the middle of the pot, which I want to have bark in. Yeah? So that's the bit I'm aiming at at the moment. As I pour the bark down the side, I'm making sure I flick some into that middle bit, so that I know that there's some in there. Otherwise, with the large bark, it'll start jamming up and stop the bark going into the gaps and obviously coming around this side we've got some nice big gaps again notice I'm not pressing I'm not doing anything I'm just dropping it in this is just adjusting it to make sure it sits in there nicely I'm not pressing down these roots will crush and can snap okay so that's more than enough of the large bark to cover most of the roots and the plant a little bit of tap no pressing just a tap will settle that bark down notice now I've got some more room so I can get a bit more in but I don't want this large bark right up to the top of the pot there we go just like that then what I'm going to do is mix up some of the other stuff which is, that's too much of the medium, get out. <laughs> so the medium was in the bottom of the jug and the small was at the top. And I want this to be a mix. Yeah, and then this is a top dressing. That's all it is. Don't go too close to the top of your pot. If you do, when you pour your water in, half your media will come out over the sides and it's lost. Then you've got to put it back in again. <laughs> along with appropriate language if it's me because that really annoys me when that happens I've got some that are, the plant wouldn't go down far enough in the pot without breaking the roots it had to sit where it ended up and where it ended up needed media near the top so that's nothing more than a top dressing and the reason is because it's a finer bark it will stop the moisture evaporating quite so quickly out of the top of the pot. That's all that's for. Right, position of the plant, yeah, on top of the media, not 
in it. You notice the lowest leaf, this little seedling leaf, is now sitting on the top of the media. The way that was potted before, it was buried. Well, it'll rot. Yeah. So that's it for that one. Don't need a stake, it hasn't got a flower spike. I'm just going to give it another tap. Make sure everything's settled down. That's fine. Um, these little nubbins near the base here will become new roots. Yeah. As soon as they start to grow, they should go down in the pot rather than stick out and become aerial. Yeah. Notice you can see some of the roots. There's some gaps there. Doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. It's an epiphyte. I've often found that when there's a little gap like that. The roots grow straight into it. <laughs> but anyway, that also allows us to see what's going on in the pot, which I like. So that's that one done. The others are merely a repeat. The only thing I didn't do with the others was give them a rinse, so I'll do that now. If you run an orchid under the tap for any reason, don't use freezing cold water, will you? Preferably a mixer tap <laughs> with a bit of warm. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, I'm just going to pop that down for a minute because, um, strictly speaking, I'm now changing plants. So I need to re-sterilise my scissors, yeah? Otherwise, that is one of the fastest ways to transfer a problem orchid's problem into yet another orchid. Now, I doubt if these orchids have got anything untoward about them. But looking at the root system here, um, not bad. I don't think there's anything worth trimming off here. See, there's a broken one there. Um, that tip will die. So it's worth trimming that just back there. I'm just waiting for my scissors to dry. And then we've got to consider how many roots are going to manage to go down in the pot. And are there any sticking out that are in the way that will stop it going down in the pot? That could be one. In fact, it will be. So that one can come off. Right, those have dried off now. So what did we have then? We had a broken one there. We'll take that back. It should branch out. There's another broken one somewhere that I've lost. Unless that was it. That bit's dead. You can see the end of that is just papery, soggy, dead. So that can come off. There's not much else really. As I said, as root systems go on Phalaenopsis store-bought type. This is not a bad root system and what I suspect this is is nothing more than the fact that where I got it from, home base, haven't had it long enough to mess it up yet. In other words it was a relatively new delivery from the mass producer. So there's another very wobbly one there you can come off as can you. They're um, where they were in that plug the base of these has rotted, yeah. So they're you know just waggling around from the from the um, base of the plant, and they're not going to grow. And that one has as well, so it just pulled off, yeah. But we do have a new one or two lurking in there. Right. So that's it. That's the plant we have to pot. Yeah. That one's coming off. That won't go in the pot. And that one's coming off as well. And hopefully this extension will grow. These are nothing more than cosmetic. These don't really need to come off. But I need this in the pot. I'm hoping that one will survive. It's very loose there. In, fa in fact, it's not going to. So it just will come off. And it was an aerial route as well. And I often find that if you try and push an aerial root into a pot, it'll die. And that often happens that if, you, if roots that were in media are then left out of the media, they'll often die. They don't seem to like the transition. They'll put up with it sometimes, but not always. Right, so now this is obviously going to have to go in a bigger pot. Let's have a look at my root system on the other one. It's a very extensive root system on that one. So I'm going to choose the narrow one with the air cone. Again, big stuff in the bottom first. And it does pay 
this is like crocking, you know, if you think about your garden tubs and things like that. This is crocking. But it's still real media. That's not, that's a lump of wood. It's, it's like do, you do get odd oddities in this bark sometimes, if not bark. So although it's crocking to allow plenty of air round, it's also media. The roots can grow down in there. It's not a problem. Now I've got to see, is this going to sit nicely? Yeah. I think that will go in okay. About there. Yep, that'll do. So same again, fill in the holes now as best you can, but don't panic if there's a few little gaps. As long as it's in there, sturdy enough to hold the plant in place. That's what that's what the important thing is. You know, this is this is what's going to hold the plant upright and give it some stability. Um, Epiphytic orchids that are potted up in such a way that they wobble don't seem to get going very quickly. They seem to stall. Um, it's as though the, the plant sort of thinks it's fallen off its tree, or off its perch if you want to say that. Um, and as a consequence they just seem to stall. And they can recover, but it's better if they don't wobble about in the pot. It's be better if they've got firm feet but not so firm as to crush the roots, obviously. Right, that side's looking good. No large air gaps. So I'm having to hold the plant this time because of the spike. The spike is trying to tip the plant over. We'll deal with that in a minute. Get in there. Right, so that's my big stuff. And now, as I did before, I'm just going to top dress that with a a layer of lighter weight stuff, the smaller stuff. That helps with new roots, gives them something to get into that tends to stay moist longer, the small bark. And that's what the new roots need, yeah, to get going. Once they've got going, they'll put up with drying out, which these plants should do. In between watering, they should go dry. Now it's going to be difficult to judge this plant by the colour of the roots because they're stained. They've got that orangey stain on them. But with fresh roots, the fresh roots will be a nice white colour. They will change to a silver, silvery grey as they age. Right, so now we've got to try and get the stake back in. I'm reusing the same stakes, but I have cleaned them off with the hydrogen peroxide to make sure that what I'm poking down in that media is clean. Are you going to bend okay? So I'm just trying to work out where the spike will end up. Right, clips, various. You've got grabby clips, yeah? Um, they're quite um, vicious, yeah? They can um, stick into a flower spike if you're not careful. They come in various guises but they do grab hold and hold firm. And then there's the various plastic ones, little ones like this that have got like two handles on. Makes life easier to get them in place. And then you've got these sort that just open up and slip over the top um, and often slip straight down again and do no good at all. Um, so in this case I'm going to use a grabby one down here. Now notice I'm not going into the stake onto the spike I'm going round the spike and onto the stake. That way I know I haven't punctured the stake with the clip. And then we'll arrange the flowers either side and we'll put another one of those up near the top. And there we go. So that's that one done. Yeah, Nice new media, a few gaps, no, not to worry. I'll say I don't worry too much. Although there is a large gap there, I think we'll deal with that one. <laughs> it was tucked under a leaf, I missed it. Right, so that's that one done. Yeah? That's actually a nice set of blooms, I must admit. So that's two done. Right. Scissors. Let's give them a quick splash and uh, sit, sit them to one side. Just let them dry off. And then we'll come back to this one, give it a rinse under the tap because I didn't actually do this one. Right, there we go, and 
this is another one with a spike, so this is going to be a nuisance. We'll see what we can do. Now when I put get this one in the pot, I'm going to change the spike. I'll explain why. Right, first job then, manky roots. Not many. Not many at all. We've got that one that we uh, pulled the casing off and left a little wire bit. Like I said, that's the root. That little bit there. Uh, all this is vellum and um, yeah, we've got a manky, manky one there. Take that one off. What you're doing, if, if an end of a root has gone, what you're trying to achieve is to cut back up the root above where the manky bit was until you find a healthy root. And if you don't, you'll end up at the base of the plant and it can come off there. It won't do it any harm at all. Now I know straight away that that one is going to stop me getting it in the pot. So you're coming off. And I think the rest will sit in there quite nicely. Uh, this one this one actually needs quite a deep pot, so this time I'm going to go for the flat bottom pot. So this one's probably got the minimum amount of drainage, um, but it's got feet, so it will get some airflow around the bottom. And it's quite a deep root system, I, you know, the roots are actually going to go right down to the bottom of the pot straight away. Um, I'm just going to put this down because I know I haven't got enough large bark. I'll be back. Right, that's better. There's nothing worse than getting halfway up a pot and running out of potting media, especially when you've got a plant with a spike on it that's just going to tip over and pull the whole plant straight out of the pot. It always pays to be ready, make sure you've got everything you need. So very, very shallow layer this time, hardly any. Just enough to sit on the bottom of the pot. So I'll just put the manky bits in there. So very, very shallow layer this time. Right, and then we try and sit the pot in, make sure everything tucks in, and watch what you're doing as you put your pot in, yeah? Make sure there isn't nothing caught up, because sometimes you can get a root will just hang on the edge of the pot, and as you try and push the plant down, it'll snap, and then you've just lost a, what might have been one of your best roots. So always watch what you're doing, just get the roots down in there gently, and again, Look at where the base of the plant's going to end up. And that's about right. Now if you push your, if you look at the level across from the top of the pot, the base of the plant's about half an inch below that. Sorry, centimetre ish. <laughs> Keep telling people off for being stuck in the past and using uh, non metric stuff and then go and do it myself. It's difficult for me to change my attitude to measurements because, you know, I've had like 50 plus years using yards, feet and inches and miles. And I'm quite happy with the temperatures in centigrade because once temperatures became important to me, really, at the orchid growing sort of thing, um, centigrade was just around. So I, I just picked that up and I'm fine with that. But you're never going to get me to measure long distances for travel in anything other than miles because I can't even think in kilometres. I can do a few centimetres, up to about ten I can judge, over that you've had it. And I can judge a metre or two, but um, you know like the length of my garden I couldn't do in metres, so I'd have to do that in yards and then think now what would that be in metres? <laughs> Uh, some people it's difficult to change, especially when you've spent most of your life doing something a certain way. Uh, it's difficult to change. And some people might say, why should I? I'm not answering that. <laughs> but I do think that um, the world should be heading for metric across the board so that we all talk the same flipping language. You know, when you're talking in temperatures, Liquid measurements, especially, you can get in a right kerfuffle, as I have, with gallons and um, ounces and various things, because the measurements in the States, although they've got the same names, they're not the same amount of liquid. A gallon in the States is not the same as a gallon in the UK. They are substantially different if you were measuring chemicals. 
fertilizers. So uh, that's about it. Haven't got any silly gaps? Not too bad. I can see some roots, which is good. I always like to be able to see some after uh, with this type of system, anyway, large fleshy root system. And then the same again, I'm just going to put some of the smaller stuff to top dress the pot and that will help it not to dry out so quickly from the top of the pot um, which gives the whole plant the chance to uh, use up the moisture in the pot and not have roots going bone dry long before their time. The only problem I've got here is that little seedling leaf. No, nope, he's okay. He's just above the media, so just about right. Now the media in this pot is a little high and I suspect if I'm a bit heavy handed with the old watering, some of it might come up over the top. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> Settle it in and then have another look. Make sure it hasn't suddenly sunk down into a vacant space and left a great gap on the top of the pot. So I'm happy with that one. Now what I'm going to do with the spike this time is lean it over if I can. What I'm going to try and do is get, let's bring it around this way so it's a bit more obvious what I'm up to. I'm going to try and get these two leaves to have room to flatten out, yeah, so that they can level themselves out like that and look more natural. And hopefully they will. Um, but to do that I've got to move the spike. Yeah, so the spike's got to now lean over more than it did before. So I'm going to put the stake in at an angle. Like that. Is that nice and firm? That's got it. And then we'll get one of the grabby clips down near the base. And it just about leaves room for those two leaves to straighten up should they choose to do so they might not they might not have it and then we'll use one of these just to hold that spike see now these slide down the stake very easily but if they're above a bloom they won't because the bloom will stop them so that's just to hold that in place now, whether these will straighten up or not I really don't know I'm just going to move that above the leaf um, so the leaf doesn't rub on it they may straighten up they may not we shall see. Right, so that's that one done. Um, let's just have a quick look at all three of them. Now they're all done. That's that one. That one with the blooms on. And our little free plant that we got. Okay, it wasn't conjoined after all, it was a separate little plant. So that's our three store bought Phalaenopsis. And, um, That'll be it for quite a while now. Um, there won't be anything else to say about these. I will show watering and why and all that in another video in the not too distant future. But because these are now in totally dry media, you'd think I would give them a good soak. And I'm not going to. They're going to stay dry a day or two. They're fully hydrated, which is why I watered them when I got them. Yeah, and they'll hold enough water within the plant and those roots that are still wet. The idea is that any slight damage on the roots will callus over if they're in dry media. If they go straight into soggy media, it could spark off some rot. So they'll stay dry for a day or two now until I see, until I see the roots start to dry off a bit within the pot. Then they'll have a good soak and perhaps we'll film that. So see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, just to mention that um, obviously I buy my bark in by the sackful, and I mean the sackful, because it's the cheapest and most economic way to do it for me. Um, take care in places like garden centres that try and sell you a bag of orchid compost. Unless they've got one of the bags open showing you what you're getting, what you're liable to get is something that's not suitable for these types of orchids. It will be very fibrous, um, probably with a lot of coir and stuff like that in it. And it will be made up of lots of different things, but it will be too fibrous and it will stay wet too long. It's not ideal. Um, you need something that dries quickly. 
Um, I mean, quite honestly, you could plant these in little pebbles, but then you'd have to water them every day because the pebbles won't hold any moisture at all. So they'll dry almost instantly, but you'll never rot your roots. Yeah? You could grow these in small lava rock, which does hold some moisture. Yeah? So it's not quite so important what they're growing in, in other words, what it's made of, as long as it's not toxic. Yeah? And don't go silly and get some of that um, garden bark, the stuff you use as a mulch. Yeah? That probably is not suitable because of the type of wood that it's made up of and it could have toxins in it. Yeah? So, um, yeah, I use orchid bark basically, stuff that's designed for purpose. And this is Orchiata. Um, there's only one supplier that sells that in the UK, which is Peter White. Uh, Orchid Accessories is the website and um, he travels around to all the shows and if you contact him in advance he will bring you what you want and then you don't have to pay any postage yeah because obviously a sack of bark weighs a ton is very large and costs a fortune to post so I always make sure he brings it with him in the van and then I just pay for the bark um, just pay for the bag um, it does come in smaller bags, um, but you'd have to bear in mind that um, that's a litre jug and we've used a jug and three quarters, say a jug and a half, so a litre and a half if you were measuring it by volume rather than weight, yeah? And that only did three pots, yeah? And we top dressed them with some other stuff. So, uh, one of the little bags won't go very far, but if you've only got one or two orchids to do, that's fine, yeah? <laughs> there are other places, um, I mean, Burnham's, Burnham's Nursery sell bark, um, their postage is extortionate, but if you're anywhere near the nursery, you can get it, and I'm pretty sure Sarah or Arthur would bring some with them to a show, again, they're around all the shows, and therefore wouldn't charge you postage. I don't know that for a fact. Um, where else can you get it? There's a UK seller on eBay that's got some good bark for sale. Um, so you, there are places you can get proper bark for orchids. But go steady what you use, make sure it's got plenty of air around it, and when you pour your water in, it should go straight through and out the bottom. That's the test. If most of it stays in the pot, then there's not, it's not Drain, not well draining enough, I think is the expression. So there we go. See you next time. Bye for now.